This talk was given by Corin Strong before the Avon Preservation and Historical Society on April 2nd, 2023. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome on behalf of the Avon Historic Preservation and Historical Society. I'm Dan Cochran, the current president. Uh, we do thank you so much for coming today. Uh, we encourage you to come to all our presentations. But today we have a very special guest. We'll give you one second. Uh, today we have a very interesting topic. Uh, many years ago, uh, there were two very illustrious gentlemen, and they had a name, I believe it was Wadsworth. And I think we have one of the descendants here that might be able to tell you a little bit about him. But, so there is a branch of the family. Everybody kind of knows a lot what the James and the William relatives did. And Corn will get into that a little bit in a second. But um, his main focus is he's trying to uncover some of the mysteries. Gad was one of these folks. That the family was here for quite a number of years, very prominent people in the community, but they kind of moved out of the picture and a lot was not known. And Corn has done a lot of research and helped a few other people. Um, we've come up uh, with a presentation. I'm sure you enjoy it. So we'd like to turn it over to Mr. Corn Strong, who is, uh, like I said, a direct descendant of the family, and he will now take us on. So some of you, I see a few familiar faces here. Some of you know I spent a lot of time in Avon for about 20 years from uh, 1980 or thereabouts when I graduated from law school up until 2000 when it's, um, I kind of moved more towards Geneseo where I am a descendant of uh, the original James Wadsworth that came out in 1790 with his brother uh, William. And as uh, we were just saying, they had with them on that trip uh, a cousin, who's actually a second cousin, Gad, who uh, was helping them. He was in charge of managing some of their property and stuff, make sure they did, it all got on well. They came by ox cart, <laughs> and also one came by boat, flat boat, you know, up the, the rivers all the way as far as they could go, and then one came all the way from Connecticut on ox cart. And a lot of people know the story about the Geneseo Wadsworths, but last summer we had a, a family reunion. We had 78 Wadsworths from all around the country and many other branches besides what we call the James branch, my branch, including uh, the William branch. Some of you may remember a fellow by the name of John Wadsworth who was on the Hartford farm for about 10 years, late 70s to early uh, to late 80s, I think. His, that's actually his branch of the family. He's from the William Wadsworth. And I, I've got a chart, and I'll go through this you know, a little more detail. I thought, rather than put on a program about the Geneseo Wadsworth, which everyone's heard the story, let's look at these uh, Avon Wadsworths, which are not as well known. But everyone's ever noticed the Wadsworth plot. The better I got, I walked out of the picture. I'm also filming this. Uh, the Wadsworth plot down on the cemetery here off of North Avenue. One day when I was living on North Avenue, on the corner there, I was actually the 40 East Main Street, um, the old white funeral home that people used to remind me. We had the little people's house there uh, for a while, children's clothing. Anyway, one day I went off for a walk and I just happened to take a little out walk down through the cemetery and I stumbled on this plot and I had no idea who these people were. You know, who are all these Wadsworths? I never heard of Wadsworths in Avon. And I really didn't do anything about it for about uh, 30 years. <laughs> and then when the reunion was coming up, I thought, well, I wonder who those Wadsworths are. And we started working on the genealogy. We figured out where they came from, who they are, where they went. So some of you might have uh, the, one of the handouts that's a simplified kind of Wadsworth history 101. The first six generations, I don't know if you can read anything on the screen, but Basically, if you have one, it'll show you that they all descended from the first William Wadsworth that got off the boat in Boston in 1632. They spent about 150 years uh, in Hart around Hartford, Connecticut. And then, like I say, in, in uh, 1790 or so, they decided to move west. If you have one, I can't even read it myself, but the names in red are the kind of significant players here in the story. And you can see, um, basically, a lot of them were second cousins from different branches. Of, uh, the, we have a James branch, which is mine, the William branch. Uh, no, I don't mean it. I know it by heart. Uh, 
couple other branches, and they're all involved in this Western movement out of Connecticut. What happened was, this looks like your sixth grade history, right? What happened was, when the king gave grants to the different colonies, the Massachusetts colony, Connecticut colony, New York colony, Pennsylvania colony, he didn't limit it as far as how far west it went. So if you look, uh, Virginia claims that big purple swash all the way across. Look at Connecticut, little, little green swash all the way across. Um, Massachusetts. Uh, what's it, Wisconsin yeah. up there? Yeah. Michigan, Wisconsin. Yeah. And, and if you look at the top of Pennsylvania, what does it say there? Anybody read it? It's on the map. It's a test. Westmoreland, who said it? Go to the head of the class. Westmoreland. How, how many people heard about Westmoreland? Ever hear of it? Well, here's what happened. You know, back in the day, back in these times, 1700s, farming was everything. Everyone had to have a farm, pretty much. And you had to have enough land to support yourself and be able enough food to eat and maybe have a little left over to sell. And what happened in Connecticut, being one of the earliest colonies, they were running out of farmland. It was pretty well settled. And Connecticut, if you know much about the farmland over there, there's not that much good farmland. You've got Connecticut Valley, which is like the Genesee Valley, very nice. But the rest of the state is a bunch of rocks and hills. So there was, a, there was all this pressure to get more family, farmland. Well, the first thing they did is they decided that, hey, this is not Pennsylvania, this is uh, Western Connecticut. And they claimed the whole top side of Pennsylvania should be part of Connecticut. Well, the people in Pennsylvania didn't think very highly of that idea. And it actually ended up in a shooting war. It was called the uh, Yankee Pennamite War. The Yankees of Connecticut versus those damn Pennamites down in Pennsylvania. And it was mainly around the Wyoming Valley, Scranton, and the eastern part of Pennsylvania. What would happen is the Yankees came in and they started claiming the land and setting the land and setting up farms. And the Pennsylvania says, hey, what are you doing? This is our land. And they came in and kicked them out. Well, then the Yankees went back to Connecticut and got a bigger army. <laughs> And there were people killed in this, and it went on for like 20 years. It, it's one of these un, unheard of, unknown wars that, that have happened. And then when the country finally got organized as the United States, they decided, well, maybe it's not such a great idea that the states are fighting with each other. We'll save that for the Civil War. So they, uh, they settled the thing. And Connecticut got what's called the Western Reserve, that the green area, basically all of Northern Ohio, all the way to Cleveland was actually considered to be owned by Connecticut. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But anyway, so what happened was, when, when, when they went to settle Western New York, most of you probably heard this part of the story, there was conflicting claims, because Massachusetts claimed it, and New York claimed it. So rather than have another war, they had a compromise. And what they decided was, Massachusetts owns the real estate, but New York gets the jurisdiction, so it will become part of New York, but Massachusetts gets to sell the real estate. So that's what they did, and at that time, uh, a fellow by the name of uh, Jeremiah was right there in the picture. Now, Jeremiah was one of the wealthiest men in, in the country at that time. He'd been a, a merchant, he had a bunch of boats, trading, you know, with, all over the world, and he was very well off, and so he was able to buy a huge part of, of this uh, new land that from a syndicate was put together to buy it from the state of Massachusetts. Of course, uh, he, had, he had also served as the Commissary General of the Revolutionary Army, so it was his job to get supplies for General Washington, you know, food and different things that you might need for an army. He bought a large section of this land. But as you can see, he was up in years at that point. So he got a couple of his uh, cousins, second cousins, James and William, to come out here as his agents to sell the land and to sell it for him. And of course, James and William were able to buy some for their own themselves. And here's my, uh, my great, 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 great grandfather, James, on the right. 
his brother William, uh, who never had any children that we know of. So uh, they came out, um, and they had Gad with them. Now, in reading some of the material uh, about the history of Avon, it's pointed out that uh, there was also a William Wadsworth, who had been one of the original purchasers of the town of Avon. I'm not 100% sure which William that is, but I suspect it was Gad's brother. He actually came with Gad in 1792. So, so Gad came out with these guys, and then he went back home, and he said, hey, honey, let's move. And so they all moved to West New York, and his brother William came with him at that time, but William didn't stick around. And there was some sort of a land swap where Gad ended up, ended up owning a big chunk of Avon, and he sold all his land back in Connecticut to William. So I suspect it was he was probably the William because their father had already died in 1769, so I don't think it was him. <laughs> so that's how uh, Gad got to Avon. At that time, of course, it was called Avon Springs, and then it was incorporated as Hartford in 1797, and then, of course, there was a problem with that name, so then in 1807, um, they changed it back to Avon. So I think most people here know that story. Here's an early map of the village of Avon. And the great big area, um, Gad Wadsworth Farm. Uh, I, I forget how many acres it was, but obviously it was a big part of the village. And I haven't really done a study. Maybe somebody here would know I'm not sure where Spring Street ended up on this map, if it's that line kind of in the middle there. Does anyone know? Anyone guess? So Spring Street, Spring Street comes somewhere down through there and goes down to the, to the downs and, and where all the sulfur water was. Okay, so as we know, um, there was stinky water here. In fact, the Indian word Kanawagas meant stink, place of stinking waters. Mainly, it was concentrated in the area around the, the Avon Springs, the Downs. It was all part of uh, the Wadsworth Farm. You know, they owned the whole Downs area at that time. And so Richard Wadsworth, who was the one of three sons, actually, of Gad, ended up owning that area, or farming that area down by, by the Sulphur Springs. And people started showing up, you know, to take the, to take the bath in the waters down there because it was supposedly medicinal. And so he was the first one uh, in 1821, he set up a shower box down. So I don't know if he made much money off of it, but that was the first time that, you know, they tried to exploit the, the stinky waters to make some money off of it. And then uh, this map, I don't know if you can see it. Every little black dot on that map is a hotel. So, there was hotels everywhere. I think the only one that's still standing is the Avon Inn on that map. I may be wrong. There was like, what, a dozen or more? And it was a big thing in Avon. You all probably realize this from, it really got, it really got going probably around 1840. And it went for most of the 19th century. And then it kind of petered out. But for a while there, Avon was like, the, like a Saratoga of the, of the Finger Lakes. You know, people would come from all over to take the cure in Avon. But Richard decided that Avon was getting a little too crowded for him. So in 1836, he sold that part of the farm and he moved his entire family out to Ohio, out by uh, Sandusky, Ohio, north of Toledo, right on the uh, Erie, Lake Erie. He had a boat and he was in fishing. I think he did pretty well on that deal. He had 14 children. Richard did. A lot of them didn't live to adulthood, but a bunch of them did. And I'm going to show you in a second. I have a map or a chart showing all of Richard's descendants, you know, as far as we've been able to track, which is a number of generations. We haven't caught up with everybody, but there's a lot of them. This is the first uh, map of uh, Gaz's descendant. Some of you have that map here. Two-sided map, and it says front and back. This is the front. So basically, Gad is in the lower left in red, and 
then Richard, and then all those people on the right-hand side, those are all of Richard's descendants, almost all exclusively in Ohio. So then, if we go down to the second half of that map, now we see the people that didn't go to Ohio. Um, and uh, maybe I will borrow a all this in my memory. Okay, so if you can read it, or if you have one, um, it's pretty small print. But anyway, Gad had uh, had uh, three sons. Uh, Henry, Henry was a bachelor farmer. <laughs> as far as I know, never married, never had any children, lived a long life, died in Avon, buried up in the cemetery. Uh, Richard, who moved to Ohio, was just 14 years ago, not exactly 14 what was left of his 14 children. And then uh, there was uh, Ezekiel, who was the other son. Ezekiel is the one that stayed around Ava. And you may have heard of Ezekiel. He was a captain in the War of 1812 and was involved in one of the big battles over near Buffalo, uh, along with, I think, mainly soldiers that came out of the Avon, or at least the Livingston County area. So Ezekiel, uh, had married Elizabeth Newberry. And that name's gonna come up again. He had two sons, uh, Gad Newberry and Ashahel was one. Now, if you, I don't know if you can read this, but if you could, you'll see that Gad Newberry married a lady by the name of Marianne Chase and had two children, William H. Wadsworth, who was known as an Erie conductor. I guess he was a conductor on the railroad. And then Charles, who uh, is actually, as far as I can tell, the last Wadsworth in Ava, <laughs> because he was still around in, in the 1900 census, and all the rest of the family had scattered. Most of them probably went west, but some went other places. But then, unfortunately, uh, Gad passed away in, in 1845. Well, what did Marianne do? She married his brother, Ashel, and had two more children. So sometimes you'll see, you know, that, like on genealogies, that uh, Asha had four children. Well, he had two children that were his brother's children, and then two of his own. And his children were William Wadsworth, and that line I've been able to trace down to 2014. And Romeo Wadsworth, who died young, so I don't think he had any issue. And then there was a Josephine Wadsworth, and I don't know anything about what happened to her. Ezekiel also had a daughter, Anne Wadsworth. Now, Anne's name, if you have a charter, you can see it up here. It's in red or pink. On the next page, I'll give you a second handout. When I gave this program back in July, this was a letter that Anna sent to her cousins out in Ohio because they had moved on to Ohio and she kind of missed her cousins and she was writing to cousin to Whit Clinton Wadsworth, first cousin, who unfortunately later died in the Civil War at the Battle of Chickamauga. But this was 1844, so that battle was a long way off. But she said, this is the only part of the letter that I actually had back in July. It says, I am Anne E. Wadsworth, still a single lady to be so far all I am. But cousin Wadsworth Newberry wrote last summer that he was coming home next season and was going to take a load of old maids to Missouri with him. And perhaps there will be room enough, room enough for me amongst them. If there is, I mean to go. Don't you think it would be a good plan? Perhaps I can find someone who wants a better half who, or will take a white squaw. I will try it, I believe. So that's all I know about Ann Wadsworth at the time. And I tried to find Ann Wadsworth and whatever happened to her. But everyone was like, well, what happened to her? Did she, did she go to Missouri? Did she marry an Indian? You know, what? What happened to her? So this letter was written in 1844. Well, just last night, I figured out who, uh, what happened to Anne. And it turned out that she married a guy by the name of Albert Levi Jackson. And in the 1850 census, she's living here in Avon with him and already has three children, <laughs> three daughters. Now, after that, I lose track of her. I don't know if she had other children. But then there's a note on the bottom of the map, uh, if you can read it. I was look, 
looking around after I finally, after all these years, found out that she'd married Mr. Jackson. So I was going online trying to find anything I could. And I got on this genealogy site, and this lady had written in and said, my great-great-grandmother was uh, Anna Wadsworth and, Le and grandparents and, and Levi Jackson of, of Livingston County, but I don't know anything about them. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I know everything about them. <laughs> I've got their entire uh, genealogy. Unfortunately, that uh, note was placed back in 2011, so I don't know if the person that put it there is still around or still checking their email. Uh, hopefully, I'd like to know more about it to find out. Do you have somebody? Uh, my grandma Cole, Mary Cole, her maiden name was Jackson, so my cousin Bobby Cole, Molly's son, might be able to help you if there's some connection. Okay, well, Jackson's a pretty common name, but... You never know. You never know. Uh, anyone else have any Jacksons in their background from Avon? It looks like they had moved out of Avon by 1860. Uh, they weren't in the census then, so they would have taken their minor children along with them probably at that point. So they may not have been around Avon to marry anybody, but who knows? Another strange thing that happened, uh, that first top, that top part of the letter that I just read to you was provided to me by the Livingston County historian. And that's all she gave me, it's just that one paragraph. Well, then I started looking through a box of stuff that had come from my grandfather. I found the whole rest of the letter. <laughs> and so I printed some excerpts from that I don't want to read the whole thing, but she's kind of fixated. She was all of, uh, I think she was born in uh, 22, 1822. So she was all of like 22 year, years old when she was fretting about being an old maid. <laughs> she revisits that subject, and she's talking about all the marriages that have been occurring in Avon, you know, sending news to her cousins in Ohio. I thought this one was kind of funny. Mr. Randolph Morgan, I, I hope I'm not insulting anybody's relatives, but this is a long time ago. Mr. Randolph Morgan, who married a sister of our clergyman, a Miss Appleton of Portland, Maine. Last month, he brought his lady home and is keeping house. She professes to be quite a lady, though it is somewhat of a conjecture among us. <laughs> this girl had a very sharp wit. And, and by the way, the one thing I picked up online was that Anne had attended, and I'd never even heard of this before, but there was a Leroy Seminary for Girls. Have you ever heard of that? Yes. And that became Ingham University, and it was the first woman's college in New York State. First it was Ingham College, and then it became Ingham University, and it was the first woman's university in the country, all out of little Leroy. But unfortunately, they went broke in 1892. But apparently, Anne had attended there, so that's maybe where she got this uh, comic writing style. This lady that came from Portland, she is quite young, about 21 or 22. He is, I will not say how much, over 40. <laughs> quite a match, is it not? And then she talks about another marriage in East Avon of Chandler Pearson's oldest daughter, who married a Mr. Brown of Lawrence County, who wears a wig and has a son as old as his best. Now I think as the old lady did, these are not matches, but pairs. I don't know, but I think I'd almost rather be an old maid than be yoked after that style. Uh, she didn't have to worry about it, because she did not die an old maid. There's a bunch of other stuff in here. If you get, a, if you get your hands on one of these, but basically, she's begging, please, give us some news of all our cousins. All our cousins, you know, have all moved to Ohio. And of course, the mail service wasn't good. She mentions elsewhere in a letter that she had already sent one letter to a person who said he was going to be going through Sandusky, but he never stopped there. And the letter came back to her like three months later. Sounds like today's post office, actually. <laughs> I hope nobody's working for the post office here. So she started talking about her brother, Ashahel. And she said, he, he remains as usual, which is unmarried. At this time, I think he was born, he might, have, he might have been six years older than her, so he was maybe 28 at that point. But as this is a leap year, 
I hope some of the girls will take pity upon him and pop the question themselves. <laughs> Else I believe he will never get him a wife, for he loves all so well he cannot choose any. <laughs> That's kind of funny when you realize that a couple years after this was written, he married his sister-in-law. <laughs> little paint and place you got going here now. What remains in Abba of the Wadsworths? Well, they got two big buildings. Uh, you probably recognize these buildings. Um, the top one is on the corner, the, the south corner of Spring and Genesee Street. And that was the original house. Well, the original house was probably a cabin on that, near that location. And then once they became established, Richard uh, lived in this house. I've never been in it, but it's huge. <laughs> the other one is a couple block, or a couple houses down from the corner, a couple houses north, a former bed and breakfast with Barbara's running in there. And I've never been in that house either, but that looks like a pretty nice house. I like those little circular windows <laughs> on the top there. Those are nice. So that's pretty much all I got about the Wadsworth of Avon, but I'd be happy to answer any questions if anyone wants to know more. Yes, Bobby. Uh, how about Herbert Wadsworth? Okay, so I didn't get into Herbert because Herbert is part of my clan. Okay. <laughs> he's part of the James Wadsworths, but actually he's he's more closely related to Will Will Wadsworth. Herbert, I, I don't have the exact genealogy in my mind, but he, he's on the William side of the family. And he came in, you know, later as, and he actually bought up, I think, some of the land as the Wadsworths were leaving, leaving town. He bought up part of the downs and he bought you know different farms and stuff and then eventually my great grandfather bought a bunch of that stuff from Herbert so there was land owned in Avon the Hartford farm the five lots farm different that was owned by my part of the family or by Herbert but that's not the subject of this talk this talk is about the William Wadsworths, which was a different branch that came here and lived here for about 100 years and then kind of disappeared. Now, I mentioned uh, the Newberry family. It turned out that uh, one of Gad's children was Elizabeth. Uh, I didn't mention her, but she married a John Newberry and lived in that one. And there are some Newberries over in, in the cemetery, but again, when I started looking at the censuses by about 1860, I couldn't find any Newberries either. If there's anyone here or anyone knows anybody that might be related to this branch of the Wadsworth family, I'd love to know about it. But as far as I can tell, when old Charlie left Avon around 1900 or died, I don't know which, that was it as far as local. Now some of them, a bunch of them went down to uh, Steuben County and there was an inn down there that they were running for a number of years, and one of them died down in Steuben County, but then they were brought back and buried up here in Avon, so, so some of them are, are, are here. Um, but as far as the rest of them went, I, I don't know. The Texas connection with uh, Cornelia Wadsworth. Okay, so again, you're talking about my branch of the family, James Wadsworth, uh, the lady you mentioned, Cornelia, was the general's sister, so she was, She's quite a story. There could be a whole book written about her. She uh, married a fellow in Ireland named John Adair. John Adair especially was evicting all of the tenants of Ireland. He was not a very popular man. In fact, they hated him. What happened was uh, they figured out they could make more money by throwing all the tenants out and turning everything into pasture and raising sheep. Because the tenants, you know, you know how those Irish are, Richard. They're, they're trouble. And so he evicted hundreds and hundreds of families. A lot of them went, ended up in Australia. You know, they, they had to leave Ireland. And they did a study and they found out, a lot came to America too, but they found out the people that left were a lot better off than the ones that stayed. <laughs> you know, they got out from under the, the whole Irish, you know, situation and went to another country and did, did well, uh, as they've done in America. Some people that think they're running the whole show. But yeah, so Cornelia met John Adair. They had to get out of Ireland. So they went down and they bought a little ranch down there that's about the size of Livingston County. And they call it the JA Ranch, which was John Adair. 
And then John actually passed away, and then Cornelia ran the ranch for years. And I've been there. It's nowhere. <laughs> it's, it's near Amarillo. Anyone's ever been to Amarillo? It's nothing but sagebrush. There's not even any water that <laughs> I can find. But, they, you know, the cattle survive. The ranch is still in operation down there. A little bit of Genesee Valley and the Texas Panhandle. Anything else? Um, yes. Some speculation about Anne. If she went to, if she was in school in Leroy, the name Jackson is fairly prominent in Genesee County. Okay. There might be a connection there. She may have met her Mr. Jackson while she was in school or uh, a yeah. maybe about her family. Good thought. The next time I give this talk, we're going to have it all nailed down. I know Mr. Jackson was a white man, according to the census. Because that's, nowadays, if you heard Jackson, you might think a 50-50 chance. It might be part of the Jackson 5. So we'll, we'll have to look in Genesee County. Go ahead. Also, Herbert and Martha were some of the most interesting people we've ever had in Nevada. That's true. So that's true. You could do a whole other program on that. Maybe not me. <laughs> Let's get Will to come up and do that one. Yeah, no, they, uh, I've heard a lot of stories about them, and it was a great tragedy, of course, when the house burned. I remember, I think it was around 77, when the house burned down, the shanty. Well, someone told me I shouldn't pronounce it wrong. Did I do all right? Ashen P. Ashen P? Sorry. Ashen. Well, the story was that uh, he named it a shanty. Right, right. You got it right. But to be high class, you know, he went with a shant a shanty. No, people think it's Indian. It isn't. It's What's a that? People think it's an Indian word. It isn't. It's not. It's, it's a, a joke Indian on word. a shanty because yeah. it was a nice house. And by the way, so, you know, when I left Avon in uh, I was living at 40 East Main Street and I was farming over in Caledonia, so I moved over to what we call an Andion house. And a N A N D A H Y O N. I don't know if that's a made up Indian name too. I, I never no one ever told me what it meant. But and uh, or Andia. A couple of choices there too. That's that first farm on River Road that Jim Jarris bought for me and mm. still living there. That's the Andian house. Mm. It's surrounded by the Andian farm. Which is going to be a solar farm. But anyway, any other questions, suggestions? Did any of these uh, Wadsworths end up in Geneseo, Missouri? You know, because there was I've a never whole heard group of Geneseo, of, Missouri. Yeah, there was a whole group of Geneseo that went to Missouri. I know there's a Geneseo, Illinois. I've or may, maybe that's what I'm Yeah, talking. maybe that's yeah, what Geneseo, I'm talking. Illinois. I don't know the history of that. I know that uh, Wadsworth, Ohio, for instance, was not any of the ones from Livingston County, but if you went back to that first sheet, now I'm going to see all your sheets. A general Elijah Wadsworth. He was descended from the Joseph Wadsworth line. We've got about six Wadsworth lines. With, you know, the James, the William, we've talked mainly about those two today. The Joseph was actually a half-brother from the second marriage. The original William uh, married Sarah, Sarah Talcott, and then when she died, he married uh, Elizabeth Stone and then had a bunch more children. That's kind of the way they did it back then. But anyway, that Joseph, Captain Joseph, he was, Joseph was famous as being the guy that hid the charter in the charter oak. I don't know if, if you live in Connecticut, you know that story. But what happened was the king wasn't happy with the colonists were kind of getting up and and he sent his representative and said, give us that charter back. We're, we're revoking your charter. And there was a big dramatic scene. They were at the state legislature, the state house. And all of a sudden, the lights went off. Of course, in those days, that probably meant a candle. But anyway, the lights went off. And when the lights came back on, the charter was missing. And so they couldn't surrender the charter because it was gone. And apparently, Joseph Wadsworth, hid the charter in what they call the Charter Oak. It was a, it's a big old oak tree, which 
was I had a cavern in it, and they hid it there for about a year, and then eventually, you know, things calmed down, so they were able to retrieve it. The legislature of Connecticut later gave a sum of money to Joseph Wadsworth in appreciation for his service as, on that night of stealing the charter for him. So, but anyway, his descendant, Elijah Wadsworth, was one of the early, early settlers of Ohio. Wadsworth, Ohio was named for him. He went out there about 1801, I think, right about that time. Yeah, the story, the story is, you know, this Western migration, and perhaps the Wadsworth family is just indicative of a thousand other families that started in New England and then went to New York and then went to Ohio. And a lot of the Wadsworths, you know, that I've been able to trace ended up in Michigan, Wisconsin, out to the Midwest, Nebraska, eventually California, uh, Oregon, there's a whole group of them up from Oregon. One of the guys in California ended up being a movie star. <laughs> Frank Wadsworth, he was in a couple of the, uh, I never remember the name of the movie. What's the one with the little dog Asta? Come on, somebody knows. Tin Man. What? Tin Man. Tin Man. Yeah, he was in the original Tin Man, Frank Wadsworth. Not a superstar, but a bit player. So it's the story of America. It's the story of, you know, people moving west and spreading out and, you know, doing the best they could. But Avon was just a little stopping off place along the way. And for the most part, the, the Avon branch of the family didn't stay here. The Geneseo people were still hanging on. <laughs> it's getting harder all the time. But, but the Avon ones, they just kept moving. Anything else? Yeah. You spoke of all of the hotels that yeah. were developed in Avon. Uh, when there was a decision made that there was too many, did they just let them kind of fall? Somebody else could probably answer that question. A lot of them burned, I think. Yeah. Uh, fire prevention wasn't quite as good back in the days. And then they, some just got demolished. I don't, the big question was about 17 at one point. And a lot of them, some of them did fall into disrepair. Uh, when the Civil War came, that kind of hampered the people that were coming to Avon. We used to have, as Corwin was saying before, there was a lot of folks that came here, and my understanding from what I've read, and Maureen, you're here, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this was much bigger than Saratoga. There was springs at the time. Uh, there was mineral water here that was produced. It was shipped all, bottled out, shipped all over the United States, even to Europe. Uh, it was quite an industry they had going down there. There were special trains that came. There were hundreds and hundreds of um, people that came. A lot of the hotels were only open for the season. They wouldn't be open year round down at the Downs. And a lot of them just fell into disrepair and there was quite a few fires. Uh, if anybody's seen, uh, we had the history of the fire department last time. It's a great panoramic picture that was taken early in the, the 19th century of all the fire departments. And part of it was because of all the different hotels we had were burning down and falling into disrepair. But they didn't all uh, do that. Some of them were taken down and the wood was reused. And uh, the area actually had some other attractions down there. At one time, they had like a bowling alley. They were trying to refurbish it. And the natural um, connection with the downs down there, there was the horses uh, that ran. We also have uh, pictures. A uh, so gentleman, uh, Mr. Stone, that took a lot of pictures of the area. His collection's down at, in the Rundell Library in Monroe County. There's pictures of race cars down there. It, it was like a racetrack even uh, for the old Model T's and stuff. But it just kind of like, basically once the Civil War came, people didn't come as much. Saratoga and some of the other resorts started to grow. It just, I don't think, became such an important destination. A lot of them just fell into disrepair and burned and et cetera. And like you said, I think the Avon Inn's about the only one that's still um, is, is active. The only other piece we have is if you go over where they have Avon on the green, uh, there's a house next to it, and then the next house, there's a white house there. That used to be the bathhouse for the Livingston Hotel, and that's where they did mineral baths up there. Uh, the Avon Inn did have a spring at one time um, up there, but uh, they were a little bit later in the game. Um, a lot of them, like those in the St. George and stuff, they catered to the people who were coming here for, uh, we had a lot of industrial things that were starting. A lot of travelers that would come through Avon because 5 and 20 was the main Indian route. It became the main travel all through the, as we opened up, especially when they opened up 
the other part of Western New York with the Helen Land Purchase in Buffalo and that area. So, and some people actually did come for the medicinal value, but a lot of people came because Avalon was a good place, you know, for a lost weekend, uh, horse racing, gambling, whatever uh, activities were being offered. Um, it wasn't all just I'm going to sit in the stinky water. It was it was a lot of fun too. Uh, there was a hand back there somewhere. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I guess, you know, somebody had the bright idea. I don't know if it was Richard or somebody else that suggested to him that, hey, you know, maybe you could uh, make a shower here and charge 25 cents or whatever. <laughs> but no, I, I, I have not made an exhaustive study of of the springs and spas of Avon. I mean, I was more interested in kind of this mystery of genealogical mystery of who are these people, where they come from, and where they go. <laughs> That's mainly what my interest has been. Yes. Yeah, they call it a summer home. I don't know. It's a pretty big summer home, isn't it? I'm not sure where the winter home was. They say that was built around 1860, right before the Civil War. And then uh, Asa, let's call him Asa. It's a lot easier to say than Asa House. Asa uh, died around, uh, I believe it was, it's on a sheet here, but around 1895, let's say. And then his wife, Mary Ann, died around 1897. And at that point, I think all their children were, were gone, except maybe Charles. But in any case, the house was sold around 1900 out of the family. There's been some reports that it was sold earlier than that, but I don't think that's accurate. I think, I think they lived in it up until Mary Ann died in 1897, thereabouts. All right, well, thank you. It's fun to be back in Amazon.